One year ago, I played 100 days on Aberration, and this is my redo. Hardcore and all, let's try not to die. Also, let's make a deal. If I don't die by day 80, you subscribe, because, you know, it's free. But other than that, I just ask that you guys enjoy yourselves, and without further ado, let's get this video started. Day one, I spawned at Fertile Lake because above all necessary things, it has water. The first thing I did was tamed a low-level bulb dog because I need a light pet, and then I found this 108 Parasaur, so I got to work. Day two, I killed this Diplo with some mad spear skills and cooked up his meat so I didn't starve to death. Shortly after, my Parasaur woke up and I named him Appa. I then built a temporary shelter, that way I would feel safe for once in my life. Day three, I crafted a bow and arrow, and then I got started on farming so I could build a forge. I got started on narcotics as well, that way I could soon tame some extra dinos. Another good thing about Fertile Lake is two seconds away from my base is a metal cave. Day four, I was able to make a crossbow, and then I packed my things up, took my parasaur, and we headed out on a journey. As you can see right here, you are literally never safe on this map, so treading through these waters was dangerous. But after some searching, I found the base location I was looking for, and I started building. Day 5, I crafted a full set of chitin gear so I could be better protected, and then I took down this Karkonos with just my crossbow because I am a legend. Holy polymer, bro. This is nuts. After hunting, I crafted cementing paste in case I would need it in the future, and then for the rest of the night, I stayed inside. Day six, I unlocked and crafted a full set of flak armor, and then afterwards, I was taming a dodic when I got drugged by these trippy mushrooms. When the good boy woke up, I named him Lewis, and then I started immediately farming stone so I could get on the cementing paste grind. I started off day seven by crafting a fabricator, and then I went on a huge resource run, that way I could build a platform for it. Day eight, I found a level 96 spino, which was the best I could find at the moment, so I got started on crafting the trap, then placing it. Once I got his attention, I lured him into the trap, placed the back door, and then began the knocking out process. Day 9, I farmed up an Ovis, that way I could feed raw mutton to the Spino, and get better taming efficiency. When he awoke from his slumber, I named him Jack, and then headed out on a journey to go get some silica pearls for the Spino saddle. And that's when I was crossing this river, and this happened. And you were probably thinking, this is hardcore, he doesn't make it out of this alive. Well, keep watching. Uh, dude, no. Okay, okay. Oh god, run, please. Okay, well, that was... He's not making it out. There's no way he's making it out. Oh my gosh, there's my Dodic from the beginning of the game that I completely forgot about. Day 10 was a fun one. All I did was sprint across the entire map trying to get Silica Pearls. Don't believe me? Okay, here, one second. After gathering the pearls I needed, I got attacked by this Ravager who almost put this entire playthrough to an end, but luckily I'm the fastest boy in all of the land, so I got away. And all I did for the rest of the day was sprint back home. Day 11, I wanted to get myself a roll rat, so I headed to the nearest beehive to gather some honey. I then found a pretty decent roll rat, so I started throwing honey into his hole. Um, let's just say that I fed him honey until he tamed. I started off day 12 by farming green gems because I needed them to craft the roll rat saddle. I then did what any normal human would do and farmed a bunch of wood because I now have a roll rat. Later on, I found a 108 female, which was what I needed for a breeding pair, so I got started on knocking it out. And then for the rest of the day, I just waited for Jill to tame. Day 14, I got my first egg from my spino couple, so I laid down some torches and started hatching it. And just like that, my army was already forming. While waiting for babies to raise, I went roll rat loot hunting so I could get red gems without having to go to the red zone. Day 15, I got lucky by getting the last 12 red gems I needed from this roll rat so I could now craft a gas collector. I needed congealed gas balls so I could craft a hazmat suit and then eventually get a rock drake. And for the rest of the day, all I did was level up my imprinted spino. Day 16, I felt like I played farming simulator for 30 hours straight because I was trying to craft a chemistry bench. And sure enough, after I worked my butt off all day, I got it crafted. I'd also like to point out that I built a generator, but since I'm not using S+, I I have no idea how to wire this to the fabricator. Day 17, the Spino boy and myself went to this blue drop so I could craft a bunch of cryopods. On my way home, I found this low-level Ravager, but I figured I could use it at some point, so I started knocking him out. After taming was complete on the Ravager, I headed home for the evening, crafted some climbing picks, and a glider suit. The next morning, I got to breeding because I would eventually need a trench army to fight off the rock drakes when I grabbed their eggs. And while my babies were raising, I went ahead and started converting my entire base to stone. Day 19, I headed back to Fertile Lake to get silica pearls because crafting Crafting 20 Spino Saddles was in my near future. And then while exploring a cave, this happened to me, and don't ask how I survived. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, please, 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 stop. Oh my god, come on. Oh, 
Needless to say, I wasn't ready for this cave, so I made the responsible decision and headed out. For the rest of the day, I searched loot drops, which were absolutely terrible, but this is aberration, so I don't know what I expected. Day 20, I crafted two pump shotguns for general protection and cave runs. I also crafted a full set of hazmat gear so I could now go into the radiation zone. Farming flint was a huge pain in the butt right now because I didn't have an inky and I needed flint for spark powder so I could make gunpowder, with the ultimate goal being shotgun ammo. For the rest of the day, I mainly just hatched eggs, keeping an eye out for good spino babies, and then I killed the rest for experience. And I'm pretty sure I'm the luckiest arc player alive because at this point I already had a melee mutation line going. So here we are on day 21. All I did for the next 10 days was breed and level all of my spinos, and I'm gonna save you from watching through all of that. I think by now, after making these videos for a year, that you guys get the point and you don't really care to sit through breeding and killing babies. But after you guys see how crazy the trench was for me, you're gonna understand why I had to do so much breeding. Picking back up on day 32, I headed to the cave where I almost died and I started killing everything with my shotgun. All in all, this cave was fairly easy. All I had to do was kill some enemies and then make my way to the artifact. When I returned home, I potted up my entire spino army and then I went for a quick fly to clear my mind. Hey, he's just a little bulb dog, leave him alone. You okay, buddy? I spent all of day 33 and 34 farming because the last thing I needed before going to get a rock drake egg was a crab, and crab traps are very expensive. So once I got the Carcanos lured into the trap, I placed four gates so it couldn't get out, and then I began hitting it in the body with boulders so I could knock it out. On the bright and early morning of day 35, the Carcanos woke up and I named it... I wanted to take Mr. Krabs for a test drive and go kill some things to level him up, and that's when I saw an Alpha Carcanos, so I came back with my strongest Spino to destroy this guy. And just like that, I had one Alpha Tribute down. Mr. Krabs hit like an absolute sack of potatoes, but I did my best to make sure he got as strong as possible. Day 36 was the big day, so I made an extra set of hazmat gear just in case mine decided to break while I was down in the red zone. After kidding up and gathering all of my spinos, me and Mr. Krabs took the leap of faith towards the scary area. Well, here we go. I'm so nervous for all of this, man. It was a little over a year since I've played this map, so finding my way towards the Rock Drake Trench was kind of difficult, and I found a lot of seekers along the way as well. Can I catch a break, please? Oh my gosh, man, there's just so much stuff down here. When I made it deeper, I ran into two Reaper Queens, so I had to throw out some of my Spino army to help me fight this. Day 37 after killing the Reaper Queens, I potted up my Spinos and then started force feeding Mr. Krabs because he was getting low on health. And this was it, the final stretch of land before reaching the Rock Drake Trench, and I was extremely terrified. So, here's a quick overview of the next three days of my life spent in this terrifying trench trying to get eggs. Dude, is there any good levels here? Level 12? What am I gonna do with that? Day 41, I started making my way out of the trench because I couldn't find anything above level 64, so I was gonna hatch that egg and then come back and look for more. The one downfall to Mr. Krabs was it felt like it took an eternity to get out of the red zone. So after more fighting and then jumping and jumping and more jumping, I finally made it home on day 42. Speaking of day 42, I upgraded my base with greenhouse walls, I finally added a roof to this stupid place, and then I made a hallway going down to a platform where I would eventually throw my industrial forge. Day 43, after smelting some more metal, I got the forge crafted, and then I went ahead and placed it on my platform, and damn was it looking good. Shortly after, I started crafting as many ACs as humanly possible because Rock Drake eggs take about a thousand of them. I wanted to stick to the tradition of my original aberration video, so I decided that I was gonna make a little incubation platform. I need this metal to smelt faster! Whoa, 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 whoa! No, no! Oh, dude! Stupid freaking earthquake just almost ended my entire playthrough. Oh, that would have been so bad. Day 44, I got flashbacks of my first playthrough because I had 12 AC units down and these Drake eggs were still too hot. So at the end of it all, I farmed for the rest of the day and it came down to it being 21 
freaking air conditioners to hatch a rock drake egg. Day 45, my beautiful low-leveled babies were born, so I imprinted on them and I waited for them to raise. While I was waiting on the babies, I remembered that I needed red gems to craft the rock drake saddle, so I flew down to the red zone to get some of those. When I returned home, both of my drakes were fully matured, so I got to breeding once again so I could get a better baby. And for the rest of the day, I hopped, skipped, and jumped around with one of my rock drakes, and man, did I forget how much I loved these things. Later that night, my rock drake fully matured, so I killed a bunch of spino babies for experience, and I got 55 levels. Day 46, I healed Phoenix next to one of these weird tentacle plants, and then I immediately headed back to the red zone to get a better rock drake. I really hope this is worth it, dude. These eggs have been so freaking bad. Okay, can you stop being weird, bro? Okay, alright. Please. Please. Oh! Oh! <laughs> is complete. I then remembered I needed another high level for breeding purposes, otherwise this egg would be for nothing, so I started looking again. Oh, okay, I'm ready to go home now. Day 47, I hatched both of my high-leveled eggs, but unfortunately, they were both females. And for some reason, the only footage I have for the rest of the day is me sitting in front of these torches, so enjoy. Day 48, I imprinted on my 144 baby, and its stats were looking pretty good. After it fully matured, I did the usual and killed a bunch of spino babies for levels. After leveling, I headed to the blue zone, and I searched around for quite a bit, looking for loot drops. I didn't find much, but I headed back up to the green zone, and that's when I found a blue loot crate with a blue long neck rifle. Unfortunately, I would never use it in this playthrough, because I already had my spino team forming for the final boss, and you don't need long necks or tranks to take out a reaper. Yeah, you heard me right, I wanted to get a reaper at some point. In the middle of the night on day 49, I headed to the surface because that was the only safe time to go, and I wanted to get as much loot as possible. But unfortunately, there was too many reapers and daytime was approaching quick, so I had to head back down. When I returned home, I crafted a full set of scuba gear because the next artifact I needed was in a water cave. In day 50, after some more preparations, I headed to the blue zone and started going down this water hole. When I got to the next area, my rock drake was too big to fit through, so I had to proceed on foot with my shotgun. This cave was very long and confusing using and had a lot of enemies and it was kind of tedious but with persistence on day 51 I finally made it to the artifact of the shadows Unfortunately, it took me most of the rest of the day to get out of here because there were so many jellyfish and eels that I didn't want to risk going through the waters and rushing. When I got out of the cave, I started looking for the third and final artifact I would need to fight Alpha Rockwell. Yes, Alpha Rockwell. I'll probably lose, but it's okay. Day 52, I found the final cave, so I started pressing forward. This was definitely the most dangerous of them all because it had purple juice everywhere, there was a buttload of creatures, and I also had no idea where I was going. After more traversing, I finally made it to the spot where the artifact lied, but it wasn't there because of the time of day, so after killing all of these enemies and waiting, the third and final artifact finally showed up. Oh, you guys are probably wondering how this rock drake is white. Well, I wanted to name something Snow because I've been watching Game of Thrones a lot, <laughs> and I'm never gonna find a white rock drake, so I just decided to make this one white. When I was headed out of the cave, my rock drake stopped working and caused me to go in the pink juice, and I almost died. But luckily, I'm a fast thinker, so I put on my backup hazmat gear. <sighs> I don't want to do this anymore. Day 53, I started off by fighting this level 8 Reaper Queen for about 30 minutes. I don't know why these things are so tanky, but they are, and it's extremely annoying. After fighting the Reaper Queen, the idea solidified in my mind that I wanted to get one because of how good it was, so I headed to the surface for more loot crates. I wanted to find a Riot Shield blueprint, that way I'd be better protected when taming the Reaper, but I couldn't find anything. But on day 54, I was on my way home when I found an Alpha Basilisk, so I decided to fight that with my Spino army. I needed this guy's tribute to fight Alpha Rockwell, so it worked out perfectly. As you can see, when I was finished with the Basilisk, I headed back to the surface for more loot crates, and I found some pretty good stuff like this Alpha Carpenos saddle. While waiting for more drops, this Alpha Reaper King showed up out of nowhere and decided he wanted to kill me. I then remembered I could throw out cryopods while on the back of the rock drake, which was useful because I needed some extra firepower to kill this thing. Okay, okay, my spine was not looking healthy. Okay. Woo! Ascendant pump! Let's go, finally! Day 55, I wasted no time and headed straight down to the red zone with a bunch of riot shields and a dream. Finding a Reaper Queen when you want to is a challenge alone, but finding a high level one is even harder. So me being Sizen, aka the luckiest arc player in the world, I found this level 116 Reaper Queen and started chipping away at her health. Dude, she has to be getting close. I don't wanna kill her is the issue. 
I'm so scared. Oh, there we go. She's going. Okay, I need to park my rock truck somewhere. I didn't really think this through. I kind of just did it, and I don't know what to do now. I don't know if I'm still the luckiest player alive or if I'm just a straight-up G, but this is exactly how it went. Please, my dear, just be sweet to me. You know you love me. Oh, first try. First try. What? What? Okay. Yeah, I really need to go now. I really need to go now! Okay, we're good, right? Day 58, I started killing things to level up the Reaper, and the Spino did just that. It got it all the way up to 75, so the job was done. And for some reason, I tamed this Lystro because I thought the Reaper King was gonna eat something, and I didn't want it to be me. Luckily, I sprayed the Reaper pheromones on myself before giving birth, otherwise this thing would've killed me. Day 59, I was looking at this guy's stats after imprinting, and it was looking pretty nutty. I then decided to name my Reaper King Luxray because, number one, he looked like him, and two, Luxray is the coolest Pokemon ever. And as as usual, I started hatching a bunch of eggs so I could kill them with the Reaper and gain a bunch of levels. I then took a screenshot because damn, this was beautiful. Also, I think my game's broken because after killing these babies, I level my dude's health and I have the normal health multipliers and everything, but I went over 100k, so something's obviously off. Day 60, I dropped off my Reaper at the tentacle plant because it would take until the end of this playthrough to fully heal him. I then remembered I had that ascendant pump shotgun blueprint, so I started farming like a madman until I was able to craft it. So here's the Thing. I had way over 1700 polymer. I could get that from killing like four Carcanos, but my fabricator wasn't big enough to fit it all in there to craft the shotgun, so I discarded all of my organic polymer and gave myself that much regular polymer, that way I could get this done. In day 61, I started making an ungodly amount of gunpowder because I would need a bunch of shotgun ammo to take down Rockwell. I was gonna make med brews in the cooking pot because I was being lazy, so I crafted a bunch of canteens because I'm a thirsty bitch. But when I saw how slow it was crafting, I decided against it. So I unlocked the industrial cooker, and then on day 62, I began the long grind. Ugh. My gosh. Later on in the day, the last thing I needed was cementing paste, so after finishing up with that, I was able to finally craft the industrial cooker. Okay, listen, listen. Pipes are hard to place. Now that I had the cooker in my possession, med brews would not be a problem. For the next few days, I searched more loot crates than I have friends, which isn't that many. Actually, I have, like, no friends. Aha! Starting things off right! <laughs> oh, the grind was so worth it. Oh, baby! Yeah, you get the point, but on day 68, I returned to my base with some decent blueprints, and the Spino saddle was the one I cared about the most. The unfortunate thing is that these were damn expensive to craft, so I'd have to grind like crazy to make 18 of them. In between farming sessions, I was hatching Spino eggs because I needed a better line for the final boss, and that's when I got this really cool black and green color mutation. After grinding for the next three days, I was able to come up with a total of 15 of these saddles, and by this point, I had just been over it, so I was finished for now. Day 72, I I started doing trophy hunting because I still needed seven rock drake feathers, seven reaper glands, and eight basilisk scales. The basilisks were especially hard to find because no matter how hard I searched, I could only find about two per day. Day 73, I headed to the obelisk to check out the location, and I also got the rest of the rock drake feathers. Day 74, I found the last two basilisks I needed to be able to fight the final boss, so I got them put down and grabbed their scales. Here we are on day 75 when I started the never-ending breeding grind to get my final army. And because I'm a good Citizen, I'm gonna show you everything that happened over the course of the next 10 days. Even though I had that whole, you know, it's been one year talk at the beginning of the video with that breeding. Yeah, if you guys click off here, I'm gonna be upset, so please don't do that. Okay. Alright. Cool. Dude, this game is designed to make you hate yourself. Uh...
And by the end of the day, my last two spinos were finally complete. Day 86, I dyed my hair and beard purple because I am sizing, and to be honest, I have no clue why I haven't done it yet. When I finished up at the salon, I figured I should give myself the signature look, so I dyed all of my armor purple and black. Day 87, I did some last minute preparations like cooking food, grabbing water, getting extra gear for the fight, and also extra shotgun ammo. It's almost that time, my friends. It's almost time for me to head to the underworld and go take down Rockwell, but first I gotta say goodbye to all of my friends. This is always the saddest part. You gotta go say bye to the things, the creatures, the beings that helped you throughout your entire playthrough. These spinos have blue stomachs and I never realized that. Wow. Anyways, this is way more deep than it needs to be, but I'm just saying bye to all my stuff because I love it. And I always hate leaving it. But after we pay our final respects to our friends, we will head down and take on a challenge I will most likely fail, but it's okay because this is my job. When I got to the obelisk, I killed a couple more Nameless because I needed two more Venom to be able to start this fight. And that, my friends, brings us to the Mighty Day 90. I mean, the Mighty Day 100. I got bored waiting for the last 10 days to go by, and I really wanted to just fight this boss because I was scared, and I needed to get this out of my system. So, here we are. You know you still love me. With my army lined up, we're ready to go and face on the biggest challenge yet. I had to pause this and turn my mic on because it's getting way too crazy. There's a freaking reaper just chilling right here, man. I'm at half stamina. Oh my gosh, there's so many orbs. There's so many freaking orbs. Oh god. I didn't even do anything. The reaper's targeting me. Why, bro? I'm invisible. There's no shame. Uh, okay, there's so much happening. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Run this way. Come on, please kill. Please kill it. Please. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why did I dismount? I didn't mean to do that. Oh my god. I did not mean to dismount. Why did I throw my light pet? What the hell's going on, Kilbert? Come on. Come on. Yo, 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 yo. Is it right behind me? I didn't know the Reaper was that close. Dude, there's so many orbs. The electricity. Oh, I have nowhere to go. Okay, maybe. I didn't know it dismounted you. I didn't know it dismounted you. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, Medrus, 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 run, please. <laughs> I didn't know that dismounted you. I remember the first time playing this that I went into that electricity and it did not dismount me. That is my own stupidity that killed me. I could have beaten this stupid... My friends, that's gonna be it for this video. But I wanted to thank you guys so much for one year of love and support. I can never thank you enough. But that's all I got for you right now. Remember, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.